All right, so on this example, we've got a um, monthly income of $3,200. And this is, we want to look into getting a, a mortgage for what, a 15 year term, and this is the annual rate. So we have to figure out how much we can borrow, right? So the first thing is, well, like this is the monthly income, like this is all your income is. So, you know, you can't just say I'll be able to pay all that each month because, well, you need money for food and transportation and clothing and probably some other things as well. So typically financial advisors would say that your your housing payment shouldn't be more than about a quarter of your income. If it is, you know, that's a shame. Either your house is too big or your income's too small, I would I would argue. So um so the first thing we need to do is get a quarter of this to see how much money we should be setting aside for our housing each month, right? So we take the thirty two hundred and just divide that by four and that gives us eight hundred dollars right so this is kind of you know this would be basically our our maximum you know kind of um mortgage payment um and remember that there's more to to owning a house than just the mortgage payment i mean we looked at that in the rent mortgage project we talked about you know your property tax and your maintenance you know what happens if the you got to replace the roof you know so so there's a lot more and more to owning a house than just the mortgage payment. So, but 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 even if even if your mortgage payment is about twenty five percent of your income, you know, hopefully that'll 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 work. Hopefully, right? Um, so that would then bring your housing cost to maybe thirty, maybe a third of your income overall, if you include the property taxes and the insurance and all the other uh, everything else. So let's just work on that anyway. So um, our formula says that our amount borrowed is um, amount we can borrow, amount borrowed, or amount we can borrow, same thing really, is the monthly payment um, uh, um, times one plus r to the power of t minus one and then all over r times uh, one plus r to the power of t right so we got to find our monthly rate and our term our number of payments t so let's start with the number of payments And again, that's just 15 years times 12 months. You're going to make 180 payments over the 15 years, right? Our monthly rate, R, is take the APR and divide it by 12. So that's 0 0.04872 over 12, right? And again, we can use this in the formula or what this calculates to be 0 0.04872 over 12. Oh, that's a nice one, isn't it? 0 0.00406. Um, so uh, we kind of looked out there. Nice number. You can just plug that in for R. Um, and then 1 plus R is just 1 point that. I'm actually going to calculate this with the thing over 12 just to get practice with that um, so the monthly payment the top of the fraction is going to be monthly payment 800 times that star like in a calculator and then we've got we got to go 1 plus r to the power of t and then subtract one and then multiply. So this is where students mess up. These parentheses right here, they always mess up on these, right? So so you gotta remember that you've got to um gotta watch out for these parentheses, right? 
So, parentheses. Then a separate parenthesis to do 1 plus r. 1 plus r, which is this number, or 0 0.04872 over 12. Okay, and then quick note on that. Um, 1.04872 over 12 is not the same thing as 1 plus 0 0.04872 over 12. And why is that? That's because of PEMDAS. Your calculator understands PEMDAS. If you tell it to do this, bottom one here, it's going to divide by 12 first, which it should do, and then add 1 to get this, which is 1 plus R, 1.00406. Okay? If you tell it to do this thing, it'll add the 1 first and then divide by 12 to get 0 0.087 which is totally wrong. So the bottom one is correct, not don't do the top thing, right? So we, we can't stick the one on here. You're not following PEMDAS. PEMDAS says you need to divide this and then add one. Okay, so write it out like this. Then to the power of t, 180. Subtract one. And then look, parentheses. See that? So these parentheses are where students mess up right here. You got two there. Because you got to go 1 plus r, then to the power of t, then subtract 1, and then multiply by the monthly payment. If you don't have these parentheses there, you're going to multiply the monthly payment in, and at the very end, you're going to subtract 1. And that's going to throw off the entire calculation. So those parentheses are very important, right? So that's the top of the fraction. Now, the bottom is r times 1 plus r to the power of t. So r... I'm going to use, you know, 0 0.04872 over 12 uh, times 1 plus r to the power of t. 1 plus 0 0.04872 over 12 to the power of t, to the power of 180, okay? So that should give me the bottom, right? Um, and again, separating the 1 plus r here if you're doing that. Um, and again, like in this example, you know, that's r. And, you know, 1 plus r is just 1.00406. So you could use that for 1 plus r, and you could use this number for r, right, if you wanted to. But I'm just going to do this for just to practice the with a calculator. Um, so... As a one-line calculator entry, we could do this, you know, divided by all of this. So if you wanted to do a one-liner, you could do that divided by all that. That would give you in one line. I'm going to do the top, then the bottom, just to help you guys check your work and to see if you've messed up anywhere. So 800 times 1 plus 0 0.04872 over 12 to the power of 180, subtract 1, and the top we should get 858, and then the bottom, um, parenthesis, 0, 0.0, 4872 over 12 times 1 plus 0 0.04872 over 12 to the power of 180. So the bottom 0 9104. Okay, so these are the numbers you get in top and the bottom. Now, if I want to, if I do this on the calculator, um, I can just use the up arrow. I can select this number, press enter, and he goes there, right? Then I want to divide that, press divide, and then select this number, press enter, and now I get this, 102.
okay, 102, 0, 22, and so on. But we're supposed to round to the nearest thousand dollars. So approximately $102,000, right? All right. So, um, so that's the moral of the story here. Not a great situation. Um, we either need to find a really small house, a cheap house, or we need to have a big down payment, or we need to increase this income. All right, because it's going to be very hard to find any decent house that's cost one hundred and two thousand dollars. All right, so that's where we're stuck um, with this in real life. Okay. <clears throat>